Hey, what's going on everybody? Justin here, and in this video we're going to be doing a tag video because it's been quite a while since I actually uploaded one. I filmed a couple, but just didn't like the way they came out and stuff, and you know, so you don't ever get to see them. But uh, I figured, you know, it's about time I probably put one up on the channel and stuff. And Kira the Scrivener put out a really good one for the end of the year, and it's called the the end end of the year book tag um and it's a little different from like uh, i think the more popular sort of end of the year book tag because it's more of like a just sort of getting into winter kind of tag if that makes sense or whereas this one is like you know this is like the nail in the coffin of the year we just it's just sort of had and everything so i like the questions on it and if i actually get this done and uploaded it'll be two videos two days in a row so it'll be a christmas end of the year holiday miracle uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, question one, how did you feel about this reading year in either a single adjective or uh, expanding on that thought? And I'm just going to go with adequate. <laughs> um, I want to say this is like pretty much, for, at least since I started book two, where like really been like really heavily reading. I think it's tied. I think I technically have read more books than my absolute lowest year, but the page count is about the same. So, not my, it's like tied for my worst year, you know, but I mean, granted, it's still like over 100 books. Uh, maybe a little bit shorter books than usual, but uh, I guess you can't really complain about that too much. So, adequate. Number two, what are two phases or authors you went through this year? Um, go, kind of going back through it on like kind of my reading history. I, I, history and nature are definitely my two, you know, major genres. So, I guess it really isn't a surprise that I sort of like alternated months. Or like one month I'd read a lot of history and then a little bit of nature and then the next month it would end up for whatever reason being like a ton of nature and just a little bit of history and kind of just like kind of like a pendulum or something between like those two uh subjects uh for the most part and like this month for example in December I think I'm reading like two nature books and like seven history books or something but the month before it was like literally like the complete opposite so I guess that's kind of like a fate <laughs> set I don't know. Like I said, it's kind of expected, just those the two genres I read. Um, but something more, a little more specific for the second one. Actually, in my nature reading, I was heavily influenced by, like, marine and, like, nautical ocean theme. Like, starting about halfway through the year, I think, or, or maybe around April, May, something like that. And I think I read about, I don't know, over a dozen books easily on like either marine biology which is you know the most recent one i can just like off the top of my head but lots of specific uh like you know nautical animals like i think i read a book on sharks like two or three on whales um sea turtles you know just a bunch of different things on like marine or ocean ecology and stuff like that so i definitely that was a heavy theme of this year and i don't i don't, I don't ever remember specifically like kind of specifically thinking you know i want to read like books about the oceans or the seas and stuff like that um i guess it just happened that way all right, question number three, what is the book you regret not reading? And that is going to be the Book of Science by the Folio Society that I bought this year. Uh, I think in the middle of the year I bought a ton of Folio Society that I like to collect. And I really should have read this one as soon as it came out. Um, the look at the slip, slip cover is super cool. Well, oh, I guess. And the cover cover. Da -da -da -da. I don't know, I just think it's like super awesome. I found this one on eBay. For like a super good steal um but what it is it's a collection of a bunch of essays by really prominent scientists um over the ages and stuff and i just feel like now like i should have read it right when i first got it because like you know i was like super excited and now i'm thinking what's probably gonna happen is i'm gonna pick it up read an essay from like one person if it's like 20 30 pages put it down and be like yeah i'll wait till some other time to like finish it and stuff if it's not like a person i'm like super interested in or i like never heard of or something like that uh so i do have a feeling once i start it it's gonna be one of those things that i'm gonna like read parts of it and then put it down because it's you know it's not like a, a cohesive like single piece narrative type of thing not that that's a bad thing or anything but i have a feeling that's gonna take a long time to actually like get there once i do start it all right question number four something you learned from reading this year and i wrote down right here Science memoirs are fantastic, like hard science memoirs, uh, written by, you know, specifically by scientists. I can think of like a couple off the top of my head here. Improbable Destinies by Jonathan Lozos. He's an evolutionary biologist and like including it, excuse me, included in this work is this like field research on uh, like uh, lizards and reptiles in like the Caribbean islands and stuff. Uh, Meg Lomans, The Arbonaut, which is going to be an answer for an 
upcoming question um, as well. And actually, he gets the last line one, I think, too. So you actually see both of those. Uh, but some of the nautical ones I read, like uh, Below the Edge of Darkness by Edith Witter. Um, just These are all like hard core science where they're going out into the field describing literally, you know, how they're going up, climbing through the trees and, you know, measuring like leaf samples and stuff, but kind of like the broader picture of why that's important. And just kind of like beautifully written combined with like nature stuff. And I don't know, I guess I always knew like, you know, science memoirs were a thing, but you know, I guess the field scientist memoirs are just something to like look, definitely look into a lot more. Question number five, what is a book you wished you talked about more? Oh, luckily I already grabbed the book and it's The Arbornaut by Meg Lohman, A Life Discovering the Eighth Continent in the Trees Above Us. And I think the reason I haven't talked about it much this year is because I just read it like not too long ago. But we're definitely not going to make this mistake in 2022. You will be hearing a lot about The Arbornaut and how it's an awesome book. Uh, basically, the author Meg Lohman has a bunch of just annoying hurdles she has to get through, uh, kind of like getting her degree dealing with you know the patriarchy basically in like rural australia with her like family life like you know in-laws that hate her and stuff and you know don't believe in science and everything like that and then coming out like like the second half of the book is basically like just a bunch of snapshots of all the different like sort of field expeditions and projects she's worked on um but just so much good stuff um you know helping uh, conservation in India, helping more women um, and disabled people be able to climb trees and things, building like uh, the tree canopies so citizen science can get involved, stuff like that. I don't know, just tons and tons of stuff. There's a whole bunch of vignettes. I I'm thinking I'm definitely going to do a reread. Um, this will probably be the book. I, I think I answered <laughs> for another question actually on the, I think the question was like, what book are you more, most excited to like get back into or to reread or something like that? end up probably gonna be the same one uh, but i will definitely be talking about that book a lot more in 2022 all right question number six uh a non-bookish highlight like a movie song a uh, show or podcast for example uh that you discovered in 2021 or this year um and i actually found a pod i don't listen to too many podcasts anymore but i discovered one i really enjoy and it's margaret roach's away to garden and it's just a short little weekly uh, like half hour show uh, where she just interviews someone and they just talk about like different gardening projects and tips and things um, but she delves deep into like kind of like the ecology and science of stuff too as well uh, you know whether that's you know why wasps are important in the garden things like that I remember she had Douglas tell me on when he published uh, his uh, book uh, the nature of oaks and talking about like oak trees and all their like uh, benefits and stuff for you know just like wildlife in general uh, and things like that. Just really enjoy her podcast. I don't know, just really nice, easy, like easy going conversational tone. Just you know, check it out if you're into gardening or anything like that. Uh, number seven, what is the greatest outlier in your books? Um, and I put down this one and it's the end of everything, uh, astrophysically speaking by uh, Katie Mack. The reason that this is my outlier, even though it's a science book, I think it was the only like physical science like dealing with like physics or chemistry or anything like that or astronomy uh anything that basically wasn't like nature or biology uh or like environmentally related i think it was the only science book that was you know something <laughs> besides those so that's kind of like why it's the outlier and to be honest i don't really remember that much from it i don't have good luck with the physical sciences so if you actually have um like a physical science like you know especially like astronomy i think it's like the one i kind of like lean towards the most um, if you have one that's really good, let me know in the comments down below because I've been searching and I just haven't found that many that I've actually like thoroughly enjoyed. All right, number eight. What book are you most excited to revisit? All right, so I wrote down this one, you know, The Arbor or Not by Meg Logan. I kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, and also the other one I'm going to be like kind of getting back into is To Speak for the Trees by Diana uh, Beresford Kroger. And it's a very similar actually to The Arbor or Not and since she deals a lot with plants and trees. Um, but, uh, she's kind of, let's see, this, to speak for the trees is kind of like a blending of the Arbonaut with braiding sweetgrass in a way. Um, uh, she's got a lot of the, sort of the Celtic, you know, old Irish kind of like lore stuff going on, uh, cause that's uh, where she grew up in. Uh, a lot of the old traditions were passed down to her, um, as sort of an adopted foster child sort of thing kind of going on with her 
growing up and whatnot. So I just think it was really good dealing with her science and then kind of her like the spiritual side of you know the living world and stuff as well combined to a really good book. Uh, I didn't have a physical copy, so I will be getting a physical copy, and that's why. I will be revisiting it. I hope maybe next year, maybe like the year. I don't know. We'll see how long it takes me to get to it. All right. And let's see. Number nine. What video are you most proud of? <laughs> I had a hard time with this one. I'm just going to go with uh, 10 good nonfiction books, one for each month of the year. Um, and I think this was something to do with like nonfiction November at the time. I think it was October. And it was basically just a one nonfiction book. It wasn't necessarily like the best book of the month or my favorites or something, but it's just 10 really good different nonfiction books and one from January, one from each month, January through October. And I think it was just kind of a cool idea of like looking through, you know, each month and picking out, you know, some sort of nonfiction book that I really enjoyed, you know, just anything I like nonfiction, I kind of like, like, so. And 10, favorite last line of a book. I went through a bunch of them that I read this year and like none of them were like super stand out. Like a bunch of them were just like really basic and cheesy about like, you know, how like all my nature books were basically, like, you know, they try to basically say, you know, we should like protect the earth and all that kind of stuff, which is good. But you know, they're all like sort of the same, but Jonathan loves us was like a slight bit different. And it's more like, I guess a way to make you feel a little bit humble. I'm just going to read like the last paragraph real fast. Uh, from the vantage point of the origin of life several billion years ago, any particular evolutionary outcome would have seemed improbable. But history happened as it happened, and here we are today, the result of billions of years of natural selection and the flukes of history that sent life down one path and not others. Lucky? Yes. Destined? No. We should make the most of our evolutionary good fortune. And it kind of puts per things into perspective that, you know, we're not necessarily, you know, we are not the pinnacle of evolution or the apex of evolution or whatnot. And it's still ongoing and, you know, we just happen to be like one branch that's, you know, kind of like formed out of all the sort of, you know, evolutionary game that's been going on. All right. And I guess prompt 11 is to tag or shout out a creator or a video. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start trying to actually tag it, like call out like some of the smaller booktubers and stuff. Like I always say I'm going to, and then I like, I think I do the cop out thing where I kind of like say, you know, anyone watching or whatever. But uh, in this video, I'm going to be shouting out Bill Rutenberg. I think he's got a really cool setup, like very, uh, I guess, we're like just relaxing, chill, like videos. I just like love his like, kind of approach, kind of bringing back like a lot of like stuff from the past and everything. And just sort of with his like uh, anecdotes and whatnot. Uh, definitely check it out. A lot of nonfiction stuff, good things. Uh, in there definitely check out bill Rimbo's video i'll leave a link down below for that as well thank you all so much for watching this far into the video if you actually made it to the end i applaud you uh don't forget to check out my etsy shop it's definitely the best way to sh support the channel and all my what's we'll the other stuff what insta and twitter and all that kind of stuff but no matter what you're reading whether how was i going to tie that in I was going to say the end of the year, I was going to say the rest of the year, but it didn't really make a whole lessons. But whether you're reading your was good or not, we're going forward, read victoriously.